What two things do you need to write an equation? Oh, oh. Thomas? Um, you need symbols and numbers. Nope. Say it. Zion? Wait, so none of those two are right? None. <laughs> Not necessarily. All right, then. You need an equation. Nope. <laughs> you Dawson? need two things. Uh, slope and weight or something. Very good. Uh, you need slopage. He just got towed, man. Hey, well, he got held back. And Y intercepts. He got held back. Good. Just to play baseball. All right, what is another name for slope? Oh. There are many other names for slope. Oh. Olivia? Rate of change. Very good. Rate of change. What's another one? Change in Y and change Seth. in X. Rate. Okay, a rate works. Sure. <laughs> uh, Riley? M. M. What? That's good enough. Rise over run works, or the equation, you know. Mr. Sal, I have a good stuff. Number three, say, 3x minus y, 3x plus y equals negative 4, okay? Uh, remember, uh, slope-intercept form means that it's y equals the other stuff, right? So you need slope, whatever the slope is, times uh, x plus the y-intercept, right? Okay, so uh, since this is the case, notice this is not in the form that we need it to be in, all right? So what we've got to do is move this 3x over here. That will give you y equals, but since the 3 moved to the other side, it's negative. Kind of like in the switch and stay game. So it's now negative 3x, and it's minus 4 so we're going to graph these points, negative 4 and 2, and it's right about up in here. Bam, point. Bam. Now we go to 0, 4, right up in here. Everyone gets that these would be coordinate pairs. They can be written like this, hopefully. All right, so this would be negative 4, 2. Wait, so is coordinate the pair. y-intercept? Uh, it is. Nobody yes, cares. It does tell us the y-intercept. And then we have 2 and 5. All right, all we're going to do now is need to draw a line through the points. There's our graph, and we have the points. So, uh, but is it possible to write an equation if you're just given the table? Well, yes. See, if you have the table, you can graph it if graphing helps. Or you can just look at this, all right, because what two things do we need? We need very good slopage. Slope. And also a y-intercept. Okay? So since we need the slope, let's look at this. As it turns out, we can just look at the table up in here. And we can find the slope from just the table, right? So you could say, what's the change in y? Well, this one went up 2, so my slope is up 2. And then this one went up 4. So, if I were to simplify this, it would just be one half. So, now that I have my slope, which is equal to one half, all I've got to do is find my y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept, what's the value of x for all y-intercepts? Zero. Bam. That's where x is zero, and the corresponding value is four. So, the y-intercept is zero, four. All right? Uh, what is the formula we use to write equations? Well, it's y equals the slopage times x plus the y-intercept. There you go. So, if we do this, we have y equals something x. And since we know the slopage is one half, and our y-intercept, we're just worried about the y-value there, which is a positive 4. Bam! You will look at this and want very badly to do this with the graph. And that's fine as well. So you just go up 2, to the right 4, and you still can find the slope that way. It still gives you the same slope. All right? But then up 1 over 2. which simplifies straight to this one. Oh, okay. Okay? All right, that's how you write an equation from a table. Do you guys want to do more examples?
Yeah. Honestly, we're going to do them anyways. I just thought you'd feel happier if I asked. All right. It worked, Mr. Solid. So this asks, what two things do we need to write the linear equation? Well, we already wrote those up in here. Slopage and y-intercept. Can we find these two things from a table? As it turns out, we can find at least the slopage. Uh, finding the y-intercept may be kind of tricky sometimes, though, all right? Uh, we'll get into those kinds of problems here some other time. True, okay? If it doesn't have a constant slope, can you write the equation? Well, not in eighth grade. Later on, you will be able to, okay? So, if it does not, then it is not linear, and that's really all you'd need to disclose. You'd say, not linear, done. Uh, is there a constant slope to the table? Well, this is the one we did, and the answer is yes. There was a constant slope. Does anyone remember what it was? Yeah, one half. One half. One half. Good job. Conclusion, if a table does not have a constant slope, then the table is not linear. Line ear. And we cannot write the equation. Bam. The two things that you need to write the equation are always slope and y intercept. And uh, can you find these things from a table? Yes. Yes, you can. Look at the table below and see if they have a constant rate of change. Label them linear or not linear if they are either one, okay? Well, let's look. What is the change in y here? Well, it's positive 6. What about x? It's 1. And it looks like it's changing by the same in each one of these, all right? Since that is the case, it would give us equivalent fractions. Which is? So we would call this one linear. Linear. Now, since this one is linear, what is the slope? Six. 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 Oh, yeah. Why are you interested? All right. Number two. Let's look at number two. Number two. So on this one, what is our change in y here? It went up four. And change in x, one. Well, we can see that the change in x is just always going to be one. So is this change four? Yes. This change, is it four? Yes. This one? Yes. Bam, this one R liner. With a slopage of? Four. Four, good. All right, number three. <clears throat> What's the change from four to six? Two. 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 Negative three to negative one? Two. 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 Six to seven? One. one. Negative one to one, two. two. What? Linear. I'm just listening to Drake. Negative one to one is two. Oh, I'll do it. Right so what we have here is a slopage of two over two. Does this equal one over two? No. Nope. No, it does not. Therefore, one is not linear. Non-linear. Okay. Uh, what are you doing? Okay. 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 All right. Who will tell us if number four is linear or not? Oh. Riley? I'll tell you. You say it's not linear. Why? Okay. Well, very good. Let's check. Just check, okay? That went down six. This one went up three. This one went uh, down ten. This one goes down, it goes up five. Well, that looks good so far. Let's continue to check. Goes down eight. Three to seven is up four. That's good. And twenty-one is uh, negative eight again, right? And four. This one looks like it are linear. It's not linear. Okay. With a slopage, so give us a slopage of negative two. So notice, here what you've got to do is 
compare all these uh, fractions. So you'd have negative 6 over 3. Is that equal to negative 10 over 5? Well, yes, yes it is. It is. Is that equal negative 8 over 4? Yes, those are all equal fractions, so this one, as it turns out, would be linear. All right, now that we know how to tell if a table is linear, we can figure out how to write a linear equation given a table. Here are the steps we must follow. Is the data linear? So the first thing you do need to find out is if it is actually linear. Well, let's look at this one. Well, well it's not linear. So this one goes up 6. This one goes up 10. So that gives us 6 over 10. This should be equal to the next one, 6 to 3. Negative 6 to 3 is a positive 9 -er. Negative 10 to 5 is a positive 15. So is this equal to 9 over 15? Yes. Yes, yes it look, looks like it is, right? It is. From 3 to 6, it goes up 3. So this should be equal to 3 over 5 to 10 is 5. So this is 5. It's linear. And then from 6 to 12 is 6. So it should be 10 again if we want this to be linear, and it looks like it is. This one are linear. Well, we both know they're linear because Well, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will be. Just, just know, if it's not linear, if it were not linear, we wouldn't have to do all of this other stuff. Okay? But this one is linear. We did find the slope up here, and the most simplified form is this 3 fifths. So 3 fifths. What is the y-intercept? Well, notice in this x values, it doesn't have any values of 0. Okay? So here's what you must do. Is uh, you got to do this. and uh, Okay, and it really doesn't matter which. You could choose any of these points over here. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I've just chosen the one that's just below 0 for x, which would be negative 10. Well, if x was 0, notice the change would need to be, in x, it would need to be comparative to 5, right? This one went up 10, though, okay? So 10 is 2 times the 5, right? So over here with the 6, I'm going to do the same thing, except for it's comparable with the 3. So if I went 3, then I'd have to go 6. Maybe that was more confusing than helpful. Okay. Oh, I get it. Let me show you another way. All right, so I'm going to use these two values of x and y in order to find our y-intercept. So what's the value of x for the y-intercept? Negative 20. It needs to be 0. Oh, psych. Okay. So I'm just going to use the slope until I get to the point where it's 0. So the change in x here is 5. So I would go positive 5, which would put me at negative 15. Okay? Oh. Negative 20 plus 5 is negative 15, all right? Oh, yeah. 12, yeah. you'd go plus the 3, which would give you negative 9. Well, x still isn't 0. Oh, so I'm going to do another... Plus 5, then I'll do plus 3. Negative 10 and then negative 6. No, that's fine. We're, we're, we're good. All right. We keep going. Oh. So you just keep going until you find where x is 0. So the next one is 5. This one's negative 3. And the next one would be 0, 0. So y intercept is 0? Yeah, as it turns out, it is 0, 0. There is a, there's, I'm going to show you this way, and then, like Tyler was just saying, you could graph. You could graph these points and see where it crosses the y-axis. All right? All right, so there is a fourth way. But I'm not going to go over that way because we kind of did that last time. So let me show you guys another way to do this. So you know that the, the equation right now is y equals 3 fifths x plus the y-intercept. Okay, something you guys need to understand is that the y-intercept is represented by the letter B. That is Greek for y-intercept. Whatever word it is in Greek, I don't know what it is. Okay. Uh, so here's what you have. You have your slope is 3 fifths. This is equal, you're going to add B here. 
All right, now all you got to do is look back here at the table. Choose any of the points. Which point do you guys want to use? Negative 6. 10, 6. Oh. Okay, what's the value of X? 6. 10. 10. 10. 10. Yeah. So I replace the X with 10. I now replace the Y with 6. six. And then I solve this equation for B. You can do that using the switch and stay game if you want. I don't care. How did you get 0, negative 1? Oh, I haven't done that yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let me show you the equation for uh, the, the y for the y-intercept. What you're going to do, so the y-intercept, this is an equation you may want to write down so that you have always. Okay. You're going to take the value of the y in any of these coordinate pairs. We chose 10, 6. Okay. So you'd have the y value, which is 6. And from there, you're going to subtract slope. <laughs> multiplied by the x value. So in this case, the x value was 10. Notice you'd have 6 minus the slope, which is 3 fifths, times x, which is 10. Okay? This gives you 6 minus 6. Y intercept is zero. So we still working on number one. The equation for this y equals three fifths x. You can keep it like this if you want, or you can add a zero. It's not going to make any difference. Linear. So here we've got a change of uh, six. This is three. Oh, that's a twelve. And three. Okay, so let's cha uh, check on the x's now. All right, 6 to 2 is 4. That's a positive 4. Uh, this one is a 2. So it looks good so far. We've got 6 over 4 equals 3 over 2. That's good. 0 to 8 is plus 8. So this next one now is 12 over 8. And we are. We're still good? Yep. Let's check the next one, too. So this is another three halves. All right, so it is linear. What is the slope? Well, we already found it. This is the most simplest form, three halves. And so all we need to do is find the y-intercept. In this example, it gave us a value where x is 0 right here. So as it turns out, the y-intercept is 0, 4. Y. Right? Yeah. Now this, so we've got y equals something x. The slope. The slope goes here, which was 3 halves. And our y-intercept, which is 4, it's positive 4. Done. So let's say that this value was not there, and you had to find the y-intercept, right? So it's the value of the y minus the slope times the x value. So again, we do need to choose any of these values. So Holly, which one would you like? Negative 2, 1. Good. Those are small numbers to work with, right? So we know the slope, uh, which was, what was it again? 3 halves, right? So the slope is 3 halves minus... So in here we look, what is the value of y? It's 1, right? What's the value of x? Negative 2. So what I have here is 1 minus 3 halves times negative 2. And what I end up with is uh, that equals 1 minus uh, negative 3. So it really becomes plus 3, which is 4 which is what we found to be earlier in the table. 8, 1, 3, 1, and then 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Ah, uh, very good, yes. Notice this is a change of 3. This is a change of 1. This is a change of 1. And a change of 1, okay? Notice 3 over 1 does definitely not equal 1 over 1. So this one we'd say no, and we're done. Find out. Well, this is down 4, so my slope, negative 4 over, 
plus 1. It's not. Okay, it's not. what about this one? It goes down 8. Down 8. This one's a plus 2. Down 2. Negative 8 over 2. This is good so far. Oh, yeah. It's Let's nice. try the next one. Down 4. Yes. Plus 1. You should know the first one. We're still good. Let's do the last one. Down 8. Plus 2. It's, it's linear. Yeah. This is linear. Okay, what is the slope? Four. It's actually negative four. Okay. Now, if you wanted to put it over one, that's fine as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Sione's noticed that uh, the value of x is zero in the table, so we don't even need the equation. We don't need to do any of the counting. It's just zero two. Okay. So we're ready to write this equation, y equals, my slope is negative 4, oh. x and my y-intercept is a positive 2. No. Done. I have a question. How do we know that this is 0, 2? All we did in this case is look in this table mm -hmm. and find where the x value is 0, which is right here. Its corresponding value of y is 2. 0, 2. Some of you are still really, really worried about this y-intercept stuff, okay? Uh, if you can't, then, uh, then you actually will probably need to use the equation, okay? So what is the equation? Well, the y-intercept equals the value of y minus the slopage, which we have found already, times the x value, okay? So what's my slope? Zero, four. Negative 4. Oh. This is subtracting. So again, please, you just choose any of the points that are there. And I can see negative 3, 14. Tyler, are you seeing this? Yes. Negative 3, 14. What's the value of x? Get us negative 3. It's on your paper. It's negative 3. I wrote it down. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what is the x value? It's negative 3, right? Do you see that? Negative 3 right there? What's the value of y? 14. Okay. Listen, I have this. I'm doing this with the answer right here, right? So we know what we should get. So here we've got 14 minus negative 4 times negative 3 is... What's negative 4 times negative 3? It's so a positive 12. 12. What's 14 minus 12? 2. 2. Oh. So let's look. Uh, what is our slopage? Well, let's find out if it's linear. This one doesn't go anywhere. 0. 0. 0. This one goes up 1. Up one and up two. Okay? So this is our fractions. We have zero over one. Is that equal to zero over one? Yes. yes. Does this equal zero over two? Yes. yes. This is most certainly linear. Okay, what is our slope? What is the slope? One. What's zero divided by two? Zero. 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 That's what it says. We found it says zero. slope is zero. Look, put it in your calculator. Zero divided by one. You'll get zero, all right? All right, now let's find the y-intercept, and since we erase this one, we don't know what it is, okay? So let's use the equation. All right, we've got y-intercept equals, what is it equals? Y minus slopage times the x value, okay? So what's the slope? Zero. Okay. We're going to subtract that from y and x. So what's the value of y? Well, let's choose any of these points. Which one do you guys want? Four. Four and one. Negative 3 and 4. Bam. Let's use this one. Well, what's the value of y? Negative 4. What's the value of x? 
negative 3. So here's the thing is, what is anything times 0? Zero? Zero. 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 So what's 4 minus zero? Zero or 4? It's 4. Okay. All right, so the y-intercept for this was 0 and 4. And 4, right? So when we write the equation, it's y equals, what was the slope? 0x zero. Zero plus, what's the y-intercept? And it is a positive 4. Yes, Holly? You can. Either one of those work. He's going to give this a shot, number 6. Good luck. That's fine. As it turns out, it should be you know, it should be negative two over one. Okay. So there you go. How does that make sense, Emily? All right, also, in addition to that, uh, I don't know exactly what the y-intercept will be here, but uh, it's going to be a little bit off from that, okay? Is the y-intercept listed in the table? No. No, it is not. What does the value of x have to be for the y-intercept? Zero. Zero. Are any of these values zero? No. No, they're not. None of these values are zero. So, as it turns out, it doesn't tell us what the y-intercept is. We have to find it ourselves. So you take the y value minus the slope <laughs> times x. Yeah, slope is negative 2, right? So we need to come up here and choose any of these values. I like it when one of them is 0, so I'm just going to choose 5, 0 here. So what is my value of x? It's 5. My value of y is 0. So in this, I've got negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. 0 minus negative 10, this changes to plus, gives me 10. So my y-intercept is 0, 10. Anyone? Well, I should have y equals something x. What goes in front of x? Emily. Negative 2. What goes after x? 10. Well, it's a positive 10. Okay.